long ago, Tesla showed the new Optimus who's relaxing in the middle of the office in a rather strange pose. Hey Optimus, what are you doing there? Just chilling, ready to help. After a bit of persuasion from the operator, the robot shuffled in place and slowly wandered off to the kitchen. Still, there was enough for news outlets to blow up with Tesla bot Gen 3 headlines, while social media flooded with expert takes. Response time? 3-5 business days. Boston Dynamics does parkour. Musk Optimus, deaf old guy who shit his pants. He is thinking, don't yell at him. But Musk quickly cooled down the hype with a post on X. This isn't Optimus V3 yet, it was version 2.5. And yet, the third version of the robot is promised to be revealed to the public soon, and according to Elon. It is sublime. But this isn't the first such case. An entire disinformation industry has formed around Tesla bot. Some YouTube channels upload videos with new updates almost daily, feeding viewers made up facts and AI-generated footage, raking up tens of thousands of views from it. But why is there so much hype specifically around Tesla's robot? After all, Chinese companies are already releasing bots that run like athletes, show off kung fu moves, and do backflips just as well as Atlas, while the Tesla bot so far is best known for moonlighting as a bartender and a backup dancer at Musk's events. So what makes Optimus so special? Why does Elon claim that the future of Tesla isn't about cars at all, but these humanoid robots? What do we actually know about the third generation of Optimus, and will it really be a breakthrough in robotics or just Musk's biggest flop yet? Let's find out. In 2021, during Tesla's AI Day, Elon announced that he was going to build his own robot. Uh, basically, if you think about what we're doing right now with cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are like se semi-sentient robots on wheels. Um, and with uh, the full self-driving computers, it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. But instead of a robot, the audience was shown a person in a costume who's just danced on the stage, making many people take the announcement as a joke. But Musk was dead serious. Uh, the Tesla bot will be real. And later, from his biography, we learned why. That he came after watching videos of the Atlas robot from Boston Dynamics. But while most viewers were charmed or impressed by the tricks of these metal machines, Musk actually found them pretty scary. They run fast, lift heavy loads, do backflips, and demonstrate abilities that clearly surpass human capabilities. Can you do a backflip? Personally, I can. And I doubt I could ever dance as gracefully as this shiny metal gentleman. Besides being bad news for us flashbacks, Boston Dynamics one had contract with the defense agency DARPA. And while today the company insists that military projects are behind them, the technology itself can be adapted for military use pretty quickly. So all these cute robots could very quickly be turned into killing machines. So basically, Musk felt like John Connor and decided to stop the robot uprising by leading it. While the company's CEO was making bold statements, the engineers were already hard at work, and soon the world was shown the first prototype. The robot turned out to be quite clumsy and could barely walk. But just a year later, Musk presented Optimus Gen 2, a noticeably improved version with smoother movements, better coordination, and decent hand motor skills. At least it's now capable of not just waving to the audience, but also handling more practical tasks. The robot also became lighter and faster, got tactile sensors on its fingers, and even mastered a couple of yoga poses. A lot of time has passed since then, and there is still no new version of Optimus. Seems like the number 3 is cursed for the developers. The release dates kept getting pushed back, each time accompanied by new promises of even more revolutionary upgrades. But the patience of Tesla's investors and fans is starting to wear thin, especially against the backdrop of competitors' success in China, where new humanoid robots are not only regularly showcased, but also sold. And finally, Musk's team has shown at least some kind of update, promising to unveil the full third generation Optimus by the end of the year, with math production planned for 2026. The public has split into two camps. Some predict a complete Tesla downfall aiming China rapid progress in this field, while others believe a true robotics revolution is coming. In these aren't empty words. Musk really does have five aces up his sleeve, which we'll examine now. The first thing that will truly set the Tesla Bot 3 apart from the other robots is multitasking. For years, engineers have been stuck in a tough trade-off. A robot 
it either moves well and performs impressive tricks, or talks well but looks more like a mannequin. Many of them can even walk and instead move on mobile platforms or simply stand in place. This technological barrier comes down to limited computing power. There simply isn't enough of it to handle everything at once, so engineers have to prioritize some functions over others. Developers of Asimo, for example, try to level up every skill at once, but as a result both the speech and movement ended up mediocre and the price skyrocketed to about a million dollars. That's why most companies usually focus on one main direction and build specialized robots. It's a bit easier now since hardware has become more powerful and cloud computing can take on part of the load. Still, most humanoid robots either stay completely silent like Atlas or can hey, only digit, respond to it. simple commands like digit from Agility Robotics. Musk plans to integrate Tesla's own artificial intelligence along with a new voice assistant called Grok Voice AI into the Tesla bot. This won't just be a simple API connection to a service like ChatGPT, as seen in Aria and other similar humanoids, but a system specifically designed for robotics. Unlike regular language models, this neural network is meant not only to generate text or speech, but also to process sensory input from the robot's environment and coordinate its actions in real time. Judging by the leaked videos, though, it's still a bit rough around the edges. Hey Optimus, do you know where I can get a Coke? Sorry, I don't... Even so, no one else can boast a similar level of integration. OpenAI previously partnered with Figure, but it's still nowhere near the kind of deep hardware AI fusion Tesla wants and can implement. The third generation Optimus is expected to become the first robot that can perform as well in action as it can in conversation. And that brings us to the second point – capabilities. Looking at the numerous new robots and admiring their tricks, few people pay attention to the details. But even in advanced models like Digit, we see rather primitive manipulators instead of hands. And some robots don't have hands at all. Take the Unitree R1, for example. It made headlines not just for its tricks, but for its record low price of around $6,000. And instead of hands, it basically has two cup holders. Some robots have been lucky enough to get realistic-looking hands, but even those models still can perform fine or delicate operations. For instance, figure 2 has 16 degrees of freedom, while human hands have 27, and each joint can move in multiple directions, allowing for an incredible range of complex and precise motions. The Tesla bot was initially designed as a universal worker, so it can both pick up a fragile egg without crushing it and move a heavy box. Still, its fine motor skills were far behind ours, though it seems Musk's team has managed to get closer to the ideal. Soon after the second revision of Optimus was unveiled, a video appeared online showing a prototype of a new hand with 22 degrees of freedom. Yeah, still less than humans, but this is a good level of dexterity previously unattainable for machines. Apparently, these are the kind of advanced manipulators that will be in the third generation of Optimus. Technically, this is implemented through actuators in a forearm that control cables leading to the fingers. The system mimics human tendons, resulting in flexible natural movement. Each cable has built-in force sensors that transmit feedback in real time, while the palms and fingertips are covered with tactile sensors capable of detecting pressure, temperature and even texture. In one interview, Musk even admitted that about half of the engineering effort in Optimus went into designing the hands. So, with the release of new version, machines may start taking not just creative and intellectual jobs, but manual ones too. But to control such complex moral skills, neural networks like a chatbot selecting words won't be enough. You need a system capable of processing thousands of sensor signals every second and coordinating all of its movements. And this is where things get really interesting. What comes to mind when you think of Elon Musk's most ambitious project in artificial intelligence? Probably Grok. But an equally ambitious development is Tesla's foundation model, a unified neural network that controls all of the robot's functions. Usually engineers rely on a set of separate specialized systems. One recognizes objects, another plans routes, a third controls the manipulators, keeps balance, and so on. Each system solves its narrow task, and then they all try to work together, which doesn't always work out. 
Similar solutions can be found in the animal world. For example, octopuses have a large portion of their neurons located directly in their tentacles, and each one can act almost autonomously. This works pretty well, and as Mark Roberts showed in his experiments, octopuses are far from stupid and can solve fairly complex tasks. Still, they're a step behind animals with a central nervous system. That's why Tesla's engineer proposed a different approach. A single neural network that simultaneously analyzes sensory data, plans actions, controls movement, and even carries on conversations. And Tesla already has experience building a system like this. Previously, their autopilot used 48 different neural networks working together. They processed input data from cameras and generated commands for vehicle movement. In version 12 of autopilot, engineers replaced those many specialized models with a single single end-to-end -end neural network that handles everything at once. And now Tesla plans to scale that experience to its robots, which makes perfect sense. If such a model can drive a two-ton car at 100 km per hour in traffic, why shouldn't be able to control a humanoid robot? However, not everyone agrees with this approach. Experts warn about serious risks, since such a system may struggle with unusual or unexpected situations, especially in the early stages of technology's development. But the bigger issue is reliability. When one of many separate system fails, the robot only loses part of its functions. But if everything depends on a single model, one malfunction could turn the robot into a brick or might even go crazy. Come on, you little ass! Fuck with me, huh? At the same time, such a complex model demands massive computing power. For compassion, the human brain consumes up to 25% of the body's total energy. In a robot, that would mean higher hardware costs and heavier design due to largest batteries required to power it all. Tesla sees the solution in a hybrid approach. Critical functions like basic movement will be handled by simplified models running directly on the robot, while more complex computations will be offloaded to the company's cloud servers, which of course requires a constant internet connection. But how do you train such universal models? Today, to teach a neural network to work with text, images or music, we fit it tons of data, which fortunately is already abundant and publicly available. But how do you teach a model to control a physical robot? That's where Tesla's engineer came up with a surprisingly elegant solution. Right now, most robots are trained using two main methods. The first is task-specific programming. Engineers manually write out every movement and behavior algorithm. It's been a labor-intensive and limited approach. A robot like this can only do what it's been explicitly programmed to do, and learning a new task means rewriting the code. The second approach is training in 3D simulators, where digital copies of the real world are created for models to practice in. Many companies use this method. For example, Figure and Sanctuary train their robots this way. Problem is that even the most advanced simulator can't capture all the nuances of the real world. How a wet floor behaves, how tightly an old door opens, how lightning changes throughout the day, there are thousands of tiny details that are impossible to fully replicate. Yet they all affect how a robot performs in reality, and it needs to learn how to deal with them. That's why Tesla uses a different principle, one that companies' engineers have already perfected with their cars. The artificial intelligence for autopilot is trained not in simulators, but in real-world data. A fleet of 4 million cars equipped with cameras and other sensors constantly collect information and analyzes how drivers behave in various road situations. All this data is sent to the company's servers, where a supercomputer uses it to train AI model, the same one that drives your car while you sit back and relax in your Tesla. Optimus is trained using the same principle, only instead of driving, it's everyday tasks, and instead of driver, there's an engineer operator. They wear special motion capture suits and wear headsets that stream live footage from the robot's cameras, allowing them to control it in real time. The person performs various actions, and the robot mirrors each movement, collecting valuable data for training. But there's one catch. Musk doesn't have 4 million robots. Autopilot is trained by the drivers themselves, but that approach won't work with robots, and hiring millions of operators for training is too expensive even for Elon Musk. So now the company's main goal is to create a machine learning system that can acquire knowledge the same way children do. 
through observation. We don't need to manually control a child to teach them how to walk or tire their shoes. It's enough to just show them, even if more than once. Such robots would only need to watch a video of a person making breakfast to learn how to do the same thing themselves. Or they could just observe your highly skilled and extremely productive work at the office. <laughs> so they can replace you at it later. And this is the fourth feature – self-learning. It fundamentally changes the entire economics of robotics, both in development and implementation. Right now, when you buy a robot, you don't get an assistant ready to work out of the box at home or in production. What you actually get is a platform that needs to be programmed and configured first. Even a single robotic arm can take weeks of work from an engineer before it can perform even the simple tasks. It's a long an expensive process. If Tesla managed to solve these problems, implementing a robot could become as easy as hiring a new employee or a housekeeper. You just need to explain its duties, show where everything is and how to use it. But to make all of this a reality, something else is needed. Most companies in robotics, and not just robotics, rely on external suppliers from almost everything. They need chips from Nvidia, batteries from Samsung, motors from Japanese manufacturers, and computing power rented from Amazon or Microsoft. This is the classic horizontal business model, where each company focuses on its own narrow segment. It simplifies production, but it also has downsides, dependence on suppliers, their prices, timelines and technologies. Plus, each participant in the chain adds their own profit margin, which makes the final product more expensive. Musk took a different path. He's already producing his own processors. Until recently, these were D1 chips for Dodge's supercomputers, which were specifically designed for training neural networks. Yes, they were manufactured by TSMC, but it's still their own development. While others simply use ready-made solutions from NVIDIA, which are less efficient and more expensive. In 2025, the Dodge project was shut down, but it was soon replaced by Tesla's new A16 chips, which will be produced at the Samsung new factory in Texas. Tesla also designs and manufactures its motors in-house to account for every detail and build exactly what's needed for their robots, all while keeping production costs as low as possible. Even their batteries are not only among the best in the world, but Tesla constantly improves their technology, investing heavily in lithium mining and recycling. And this isn't just a technical advantage, it's a completely different philosophy known as a vertical business model. But the most important factor is, of course, production capacity. Tesla already has gigafactors all around the world, which can be retooled for robot manufacturing. OpenAI can build the best AI, Boston Dynamics can make the most agile robots, and Chinese companies can offer the lowest prices. But no one except Musk can do all of it at once. That's exactly why he can confidently promise a price of $20,000 per robot. It might sound expensive compared to models from Unitree, which sell for around $6,000, but those don't even have hands. They're more like educational platforms than robots capable of doing real work. And that brings us to the fifth point of our list – infrastructure. On one hand, Musk's promises look ambitious. A talking robot with human-like hands that can learn on its own – all of the price of a car sounds like a pretty tempting offer, and Tesla already has all the necessary technologies and production capabilities to make it happen. On the other hand, there are plenty of technical problems. The company has repeatedly delayed the start of mass production, while competitors like Unitree are already manufacturing thousands of robots each year. Meanwhile, the Chinese government has made robotics a national priority. But if Tesla delivers on all its promises, this could be as pivotal a moment as the iPhone launch in 2007. Smartphones existed before it, but it was Apple that made them truly mainstream, changing the lives of billions of people. So the question is, can Musk make robots as common as electric cars? Or will this turn out to be just another bubble like NFTs in the metaverse? Or maybe Chinese companies will get it first? Drop your thoughts in the comments and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe! Bye!